I think he should stay in California uh, uh, rehabbing with Watkins or the physical therapist out there. His home is out there. So, um, you know, for the period of time until he can do baseball activities, I would recommend him stay on the West Coast. And as far as third base goes now, do you just look at Adams temporarily? Do you think about you have Alex coming back? How do you look at third base going forward here? Do you need to go get somebody? Um, well, we're always looking to upgrade if we can, regardless of position. Um, but you have to keep in mind, too, about, you know, yeah, we, we expect to get Alex back. And um, so as of right now, we're going with what we have. And, and if we ever run into something that makes sense, then we'll look at that. But uh, but we'll keep going with what we got. Ed, over on the wall, Cash. In some perverse way, are you glad at least you know? Well, uh, this is a new finding. It's it's something that has had recently occurred. So it's not, the, you know, the this wasn't an issue, as I understand it. This is a different version of the MRI than that we that had been previously taken. So it's just his injury has gotten worse. So over time, what you know, obviously from playing, I guess. So you know, uh, you know, I'd rather not know that we have uh, Kevin down for probably 12 weeks. But um, hey, it is what it is, and you just have to turn the page on it. You know, uh, he's in the best medical care you can provide with Watkins and his associates, and. And uh, he's no longer an option for us here in uh, the next, you know, uh, two months. But um, so, again, it's going to create opportunities specifically, I would say, for Adams to continue to show what he can do and grow as a ball player at the major league level. Sweet. Uh, I guess Euclid doesn't really fall into this category, but you've got a bunch of other guys who could come back within the next month, month and a half. Uh, how does that affect how you go about what you can do before July 31st. So you're going to have either guys will not be back or they'll only be back for a short period of time uh, for you to evaluate. You know, how does it affect us? I mean, listen, i got to keep an eye on, you know, guys that we hope we can get back because those those could be the the saviors for us as we try to propel ourselves into postseason, you know, um, you know, during the stretch drive and, you um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to getting Granderson and Jeter and anybody and everybody to share a, you know, who we just had to put back down. You know, I'm looking forward to getting all those guys back. Um, and I guess specifically is, you know, do I need a, you know, a certain player to a certain position if I know, you know, uh, Alex obviously is another name that, that I'd mentioned earlier. Um, if I need a certain player that I know is coming back in theory, then I guess it can run interference and affect it, you know, but, uh, you know, up until this point, I've been open for a lot of business uh, and listening and or, or engaging and, you know, after up until the June draft, you know, it really gets met with crickets uh, unless it's about, you know, you're dealing with players that people are willing to move. Uh, and that's, that's really the, the caliber of player you were dealing with prior to the June draft. And so we've been doing some incremental upgrade attempts. Now we'll look at some significant stuff over time, you know, and uh, we'll continue to mix and match and have those conversations. Whether they lead to doing anything, you know, um, I don't know, but we'll see. Mark. Brian, do you, uh, I think with Alex, you guys have said pretty consistently it'll be sometime after the All-Star break. With what he's been doing lately, I, I understand setbacks and variables and things like that, but assuming things progress the way you want, do you have any clear picture of when you could have him back beyond just after the All-Star break? No. No, I, I haven't drilled down on that just yet, to be honest. I mean, I think once you start doing simulated games where you're playing both offense and defense and then you and you start, you know, uh, start looking at a calendar about, all right, when you get through these type of simulated situations, when can you start a injury rehab assignment, that's when you start kind of being able to really get a guesstimate. You know, so far we, uh, we've we struggled in terms of getting guys back on, on the expectation, the time frame, or, or having those guys, you know, get re-injured with unfortunate circumstances like Granderson and, you know, when Jeter rebroke his leg, how and when, you know, is up in the air. So I, for me to speculate, it would be probably – irresponsible at this stage because it's like predicting the weather so and you know medicine's an exact science it's tough you know <laughs> you know position players or pitchers and you know uh and some of these injuries like the wrists with techs and stuff it just complicates it more wrists and backs are nightmares clearly we're getting unfortunately some expertise on 
labor and repairs on hips and I'd rather not I never heard about it 10 years ago and now it's something that you know it's something we're getting educated on too much on so we'll you know we'll figure it out the best we can you know we're doing it so far and we'll continue to do so